A while back I made a video about Burp Suite and the Portswigger Web Security Academy. And in that video I went through a couple of the labs for cross-site scripting. That video is pretty well received and I even had some people ask me to go over some of the other labs and some of the other topics. So in this video I'm going to go over a couple of the labs under the SQL injection topic. If you don't know what SQL injection is, or if you do know but you just want to learn more about it and get more into the nitty gritty details, then you can go check out the Web Security Academy learning path at Portswigger, which I'll link in the description below. And they'll explain everything you need to know about it with all kinds of examples and different sort of resources they have there for you. But at a high level, SQL injection is a web security vulnerability that allows an attacker to interfere with the queries that an application makes to its database. Now I don't want to go into a huge deep dive on SQL injection for this video, but if we look back at the learning path just to get a quick idea of how this whole thing works, you can start to understand how a parameter can affect a database query and how we can manipulate that. So in this example, it says that it's looking for the category equals GIFs. And if you look at the corresponding database query, it says select star from products where category equals GIFs and released equals one. So this release parameter is making sure that the database is not returning any products that are not released yet like some sort of product manufacturer who may have like a new line of products that are coming out in next year or something and they're already in the database but they're not released to the public that's kind of what this is doing and if we wanted to use sql injection to access all of those products that are not released yet then we could bypass that released equals one and get it to return everything that is in that table even if it's not released and to do that, they're going to put in the parameter gifts, single quote, and then dash dash. Because in SQL, a dash dash is a comment indicator. So everything that comes after the dash dash is ignored by the database. It's not considered part of the query. It's just a comment. So the first lab I'm going to look at is the one called SQL Injection Vulnerability Allowing Login Bypass. They really have catchy titles for these labs, don't they? So if we look at the instructions for this lab, it says to solve the lab, perform a SQL injection that logs into the application as the administrator user. So when I open this lab, I see this little shop website. And if you look up at the top right corner, you see this button that says my account. And since we're looking for a SQL injection in the login page, that's probably a good place to start. So when we click on that My Account button, we get this login page, and that is where we're going to find our SQL injection. So this lab can actually be solved without using Burp Suite at all, because it's a pretty simple one. Since we can imagine that the SQL query is asking for the username and the password, we can just use that comment functionality that was mentioned in the learning path to bypass the entire process of looking up the password and just say look up the username and that's all you need. So we're going to look up the administrator and we're going to put that single tick and our dash dash to comment out the password. And just in case it needs some content in that password field to submit, we'll just type test in there and we'll hit login. And congratulations, you just solved the lab. Now, if we did want to use Burp Suite to do this, we could just open the browser in Burp Suite and then again, go to my account, go to the login page, and we would just turn on the intercept and then put whatever parameters you want in the username and password field, hit login, and then it's going to intercept that request right here in the intercept tab. And we see that we have the username test and the password test. And then we can just do that same input that we did in the browser, but this time we have the actual full request. Again, administrator, single tick, dash dash to comment out the password. And then we turn off intercept. And again, it logs in and it solves the lab. Now for this video, I wanted to do one more lab. And this one is going to be a little bit more complex. This lab is going to be using a union attack and it's going to be done to determine the number of columns returned by the query. So to solve the lab, we need to determine the number of columns returned by the query by performing a SQL injection union attack that returns an additional row containing null values. 
So if we open up the lab in our Burp Suite browser, then we see that it's got this little shop that has all these different categories with different items in each category. So if we look at tech gifts, for example, it has these items that are in that directory. So if we look at the HTTP history, we see here's the request and it has this category parameter and that is going to be our target for our SQL injection. And we can right click on this request and say send to repeater. Then we click on our repeater tab and now we have this request in our repeater and we can mess with that category parameter and anything else we want to mess with and keep sending that request over and over again and analyze that response and see how it changes every time we change something. So a quick crash course on a union attack. Union lets you retrieve data from other tables within the database other than just the data that you're specifically already looking at. So this is a bit of a more complicated SQL injection than the previous one we looked at. This lab that we're looking at right now is really just the first stage of a full-blown union attack though, so it's going to be a little bit easier. The main thing we're going to be looking at in this lab is just determining the number of columns. So the way we're going to do this is by using the union select null query. But because this is a URL parameter, we need to add a plus in between each word instead of spaces because URLs don't play friendly with spaces. So we send that. And if we scroll down in the response, we see internal server error. But as it says in learning path, if the number of nulls does not match the number of columns, the database returns an error, which is what we got. But when the number of nulls matches the number of columns, the database returns an additional row in the result set containing null values in each column. So we're just going to add another null for another column and continue doing that until we get the results that we want. So add one more null, send that request, still internal server error, add another null, and I believe that this time it actually worked. So if we hit render, now we see that we're not getting that internal server error anymore. So now we know how many columns are in that database. So that information might not seem that special right now, but this is just step one of a union attack, which will then be used in future labs. So if you go back to the SQL injection labs, you'll see that this lab is the one we just completed. SQL injection union attack determining the number of columns returned by the query. So if you look at the next few labs on the list, you'll see a bunch of other union attacks where they are just building on that information that you have with each attack. So once you have the number of columns, then you use that to find column containing specific text, and then you use that to retrieve data returned from other tables, and then you retrieve multiple values in a single column. And by the end of this, you've carried out a full-scale SQL injection union attack, which is a pretty advanced attack. So I just walked you through the first lab in this little series about union attacks, but I invite anyone who is interested in SQL injection and getting better at these more advanced attacks to go through this entire list and do all of them to do the full-scale union attack because it is pretty advanced and it's a pretty cool little step-by-step -step process they have in these labs. So that's all I wanted to go over in this video, but before I let you go, I did want to mention one little cool feature that I noticed that I think is pretty new. The Web Security Academy site now has this Mystery Labs tab, and they also have this big button right here and under the All Labs section. And if you click this, it takes you to a random lab with the title and description hidden, so you'll have no prior knowledge of the type of vulnerability that you need to find and exploit. And that's a great practice. If you already know how to do a lot of these attacks, maybe you've done a lot of these labs, maybe you've done other labs and different practice scenarios with things like try hack me or hack the box or any of those kind of things. A lot of those give you like instruction of how to get started. In the real world, you don't have any of that instruction. When you're given a website for a bug bounty or if you're working in application security and are trying to test something for a client, no one tells you, hey, this website is vulnerable to SQL injection. Can you figure out how to exploit it? you have to find that vulnerability yourself with no prior information. So if you want to get better at that kind of thing of figuring out how to find vulnerabilities and then exploit them, then I think this is a great way to practice that. 
And they even have a option where they let you select your difficulty level and your category. So maybe you wanted to do an apprentice level and you wanted to do a directory traversal challenge. Then you would click challenge me and then it opens up this lab without any sort of title or description or anything giving you hints about where the vulnerability might be. So I just thought that was a really cool new little resource that I noticed in the Web Security Academy website that I hadn't seen before. So some of you might wanna check that out. And if there are any other categories or different things in the Web Security Academy or other sort of websites like this, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about some other topic like this.